Welcome to Family Bible Time. We are in Proverbs chapter 2. We are in Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. In Proverbs 2. And we're in, also in wind down of energy. So let's see what we can do. Let's pray and let's go. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth day by day. Thank you for the energy that you do give. Please strengthen us now at the end of a very long and busy day. I pray for your help. I pray for the ability to study your word. Uh, we ask you that you teach us for your sake. Amen. <laughs> My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He's a shield to those who walk in integrity, guiding the paths of justice, and watching over the way of his saints. Just stop there for a second. Um, we, we learned yesterday, fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And yesterday, it was, it was kind of, you, whatever you do, get wisdom. Now, he's saying very simply that wisdom is something God gives you. So, you have to seek wisdom wisdom like silver search for it like hidden treasures verse 4 call out for understanding verse 3 insight and understanding and it's God who gives it to you mm. now if you get it then you're good verse 9 then you will understand righteousness and justice equity every good path for wisdom will come into your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you, understanding will guard you, delivering you from the way of evil, from men of perverted speech, who forsake the paths of uprightness, to walk in ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil. Men whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. So you will be delivered from the forbidden woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words. Who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death and her paths to the departed. None who go to her come back nor do they regain the paths of life. So you will walk in the way of the good and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright will inhabit the land and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the treacherous will be rooted out. Okay, this is one of those great if and then statements in the Bible, isn't it? There are many of them. And there are lots of them in, wis in Proverbs. Um, but it, if, you, if you just look at verse 1 again, my son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, and so on. Verse 3, if you call out for insight. Verse 4, if you seek it like silver. Verse 5, then you will understand. So, this is just setting before you a choice, isn't it? If you're asking the question, do I want wisdom? Do 
I really want to walk in the fear of the Lord. I want to know the Lord. Then you know what you have to do here. You have to seek it. You have to receive the words from Solomon. And you have to make your ear attentive, verse 2, to wisdom. Now that's very different, isn't it? From allowing yourself to be inattentive. And you see that just going to Sunday school class or going to school there are some children who just allow themselves not to listen there are other children who have to make themselves listen because they would naturally tend to wander off in their thinking would naturally tend to 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 just not pay attention but Solomon's saying you know, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. That's the problem, isn't it? Our hearts naturally don't lean towards understanding. Our, our hearts naturally lean towards folly. So, so what do we need to do? Verse 3, call out for insight. Raise your voice, friend. Pray. Mm. You want to know God? You want to know wisdom? Mm. Look, listen carefully. Make yourself attentive. Make your heart lean towards it. Pray, pray, pray. Take it seriously. Mm. Right, Galatians chapter 1. Um, I'll probably give you more details as we go through Galatians, but... Galatia was modern, what is now modern day Turkey. There was a, a number of cities in Galatia, a number of churches in Galatia. And look in verse 1, Paul writes to them. In verse 2, he mentions it. Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with me to the churches of Galatia. And that just shows you when um, when he writes to the saints in Corinth, he's writing to just one church. Interesting, isn't it? Don't play with the mic, it'll be very loud on their end. <laughs> um, when he writes to, to the church in Corinth, he's writing to just one church in a city. It would have been a very large church. But in, in this instance, he's writing to multiple churches, which, if you're interested in church doctrine, mm. helps you to understand that the churches were independent, not just one amorphous blob. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins and delivered up to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. It doesn't really take Paul long to give the gospel, does it? Mm. Who gave himself for our sins. Wow. Verse 6. I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. Mm. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and who want to distort the gospel of Christ. Now, how serious is it to, to change the message? How serious is it to put your own spin on it? To say, well, this is, this is what I think. How serious is that? Well, it's pretty serious, isn't it? Because see what Paul says next verse 8 but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you let him be accursed whoa verse 9 as we have said before so now I say again if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received let him be accursed. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? 
Why am I trying to please man? If I were trying, still trying to please man, I'd be, would not be a servant of Christ. For I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. In other words, I don't, you don't get to change this. This comes from God. Mm. For I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it from any man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. You've heard of my former life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people. So extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me apart before I was born and who called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with anyone, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went away into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas. Who's Cephas? Peter. To visit Cephas and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. In what I'm writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown in person to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only were hearing it said that he who used to persecute us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. Mm. All right, so what's going on in, in, in Galatia, the Galatian churches. Okay, well, in the Galatian churches there are false teachers. You could say, well, oh no, not again. Yes, it was all over the place, actually. In the New Testament, there, was, there always seemed to be these false teachers popping up. And in, this, in this case, the false teachers were teaching a different version of the gospel. As Paul sets out, look, if it's different, if it's not the gospel we preach to you, it's not the gospel. And then he says, basically, if anyone preaches different to what we preached, let them be accursed. And you think, well, how arrogant is that? No, that's not arrogant, that's loving. If you've just given people the truth, which actually saves them from mm -hmm. hell, and then someone come, someone else comes along and says, oh, let me give you my version. And it's not the truth. Well, they're actually selling a lie. Mm. And so it's why this, this current idea of all just, you know, let's all get along, you can have your truth and I'll have mine. You know, we'll all... Everyone should just be given a... Oh, sure. Everyone should just be given an equal hearing, and no, this it, it's not true. If, if people are sending other people to hell by the error that they teach, they don't deserve a hearing. They deserve to be shut down. Um, you know, that's not very politically correct, but it's true. Paul didn't want these people to have a voice. He wanted them. If they were going to preach a different gospel, he wanted them to be accursed. And then he begins again, I suppose you could say, to defend his own calling and his own apostleship. And uh, We're going to see some more of that when we get into chapter 2. He's telling them his own story because other people again are attacking him and undermining his story and so he's being forced to explain himself well it's really great because we get a little bit of insight into paul's life mm. we'll see that come to light more tomorrow but for now let's pray lord thank you for today thank you for what we've learned we pray that you would help us to be vigilant not to be taken in by a false doctrine that other people could teach. 
and not to be end up teaching it ourselves. Lord, we pray that you keep our hearts pure and steady on the truth. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Good night. Um, God bless you. See you tomorrow. We'll see you, God willing, uh, early in the morning tomorrow. Until then.